higher and hit harder than ever before. Thanks in part to sport and exercise scientists who are using their understanding of physiology to optimize athletes training, performance and recovery and helping us live healthier lives through physical activity. Take Jamie, he works as the sports scientist for a professional football team. Jamie is helping the players stay injury free by using sensors on the skin to gather data on muscle contractions and fatigue and using these data to tailor players' training to maximise performance and minimise injuries. Then there's Victoria. She's investigating why athletes with spinal cord injuries seem prone to overheating. This is when our deep body temperature goes too high, increasing blood flow to the skin and putting greater strain on the heart. Below their injury, these athletes' bodies can't regulate temperature through usual methods like sweating. And the higher up the injury, the worse the problem is. With competitions like the Paralympic Games increasingly held in hot climates, this research could play a vital role in helping to prepare athletes and keep them safe. And it's not just athletes who benefit from sports and exercise science. It's also helping people with physiologically challenging jobs, like those working in extreme environments and the emergency services. Radica works with the fire service to measure the physiological impact of wearing protective equipment like respiratory devices. These units allow firefighters to work in hot, smoky conditions, but the extra load can place increased strain on the heart and decrease firefighters' capabilities. So Radica's research is being used to devise recommendations about how long firefighters should use such protective equipment. And what does sport and exercise science mean for the rest of us? Well, it's been said that if exercise were a pill, it'd be one of the most impactful drugs ever invented. From improving patients' fitness prior to surgery to combating epidemics such as obesity and diabetes, sport and exercise scientists are showing us how physical activity can help us to live healthier lives for longer. But is occasional exercise enough? Recent research has uncovered something known as the active couch potato phenomenon. This describes people who are physically active but who still spend many uninterrupted hours sitting down. It turns out this can cause real problems for our bodily systems with increased blood pressure, cholesterol and risk of cardiovascular disease. So sport and exercise scientists have a big challenge to make sure we're moving more and staying healthy. By helping athletes, protecting workers and pushing for greater public health, physiologists in sport and exercise science are using their knowledge for good everywhere. Now is a great time to get involved. Well, and of course, we're talking sports and exercise science. And to help us do that, I want to welcome Marissa Gibson Bailey, sports and exercise scientist and certified exercise physiologist, as well as Professor Adam Hawkey, expert in sports and exercise science. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Ad Professor Adam. Good morning, Rockers. Good morning, Carrie. Good, Good morning, morning to Tobago. <laughs> Good morning. Always a pleasure to have you guys on the show. Uh, Professor Adam Hawkey, we just, saw, we just saw your animation showing the roles that sport and exercise scientists perform. But can you explain to us if sport exercise science is the same as sports medicine? And can these terms be used inter interchangeably? Yeah, thank you, Rokas. I'm, I'm really pleased you're able to show the animation this week because it is it nicely summarizes some of the roles that sport and exercise scientists undertake. Yeah. Um, in answer to your question, um, sport and exercise science is, is not the same as sports medicine. Um, while sports science focuses on the ways in which we can improve performance, so maximizing the effectiveness of individual training interventions and reducing the risk of injury from monitoring physical and mental training and competition loads, um, a sports medic is very much concerned with the medical aspects of a sports performer. So those directly related to the individual's health and well-being. And this could include developing and implementing concussion protocols, pitch side treatment for acute and serious injuries, and also importantly, the treating and management of chronic conditions that are completely unrelated to their sporting activity and are more concerned with their general wellness. So things like Crohn's disease or, or diabetes, for example. Okay, okay. Yeah. And while some medical yeah. practitioners or doctors, well, they, you know, they like sports or they have an interest in sports. And, and is that enough uh, to qualify one to be a sport medicine doctor? Well, but both sport and sports science and sports medicine roles are, are very specialist. And I think Marissa will agree with me when I speak about yes. that and, and have a specific function within a team or an individual sporting environment. And, and the training undertaken for those roles is, is a real indication of this specialism. So to be an accredited sport and exercise scientist like, like myself and Marissa are, 
we've had to complete recognized undergraduate and postgraduate degrees in sports science. And in our case, these have been endorsed by the UK's professional body bases. Mm. And then we've had to go through a comprehensive process to be able to demonstrate both in our knowledge and our practical skills in the laboratory and on the field, the required competencies indicating that we're qualified to work with athletes. Right. And if you factor in other qualifications like PhDs, that can take around 10 years to achieve this status. And wow. similarly, medical doctors, MBBS in the UK and an MD in the US have to go through a similar amount of training in their specialism. And yeah. as an example of this, I'm, I'm an honorary lecturer in sports medicine in, um, in the University of Dundee. And part of my role is to teach and supervise medical students who undertake a sports science, sports medicine, MSc within their course. Okay. So to be a sports medicine practitioner, you have to be both medically qualified and also have specific sports medicine training rather than just a, a simple interest. Yes. Okay, I so agree. it's basically a specialization as you go ahead. Marissa, you were saying? Yes. Yes, um, because one of the things I wanted to add to what Adam is saying is that within the sport medicine, the, the professional roles are different. For example, you have the athletic trainer right. that work with the sport medicine practitioner. You have the physical therapist. So when you look at the different professions, you could see it's basically in the medical field. You see them operating in the medical field. Um, nutritionist. Um, the strength and conditioning specialist. Mm -hmm. You have the orthopedic nurse, the chiropractor, yeah. you know? So it is so much completely different from sports science. Not saying that they don't work together. We definitely have to work together because the main focus is the athlete, you of know? Course. So there is a difference. The professions under each area is different, but we have to work together. Okay, and tell me about, about the, how the, these, I mean, you mentioned that the boat rules are they're different, but they can work together. Uh, how do they complement each other to provide support to each other and to the, at, the athletes? Yeah, I, I, think, I think the key word there you've used, Raucus, is, is the word complement. Um, and Marissa's eloquently yes. described that. And yes. both sports scientists and sports medics play a crucial role in supporting athletes and sports teams. So, the sports scientists will work closely with coaches regarding training loads um, and specific interventions relating to their performance. They're also liaised with the physiotherapists and the medical doctor to ensure that they're aware of any issues, medical issues that may affect that individual's training or competition. And the sports medic um, will advise the coaching staff and, and liaise with the sports scientists on issues relating to their return to play. So injury, sickness, concussion, as I mentioned earlier to establish the most effective methods to ensure player safety and maximize, oh, maximize performance. And, and just to highlight, I, you know, I'm regularly in contact with my sports medicine colleagues to ask specific advice regarding sports science matters that they're unsure on. And likewise, I frequently ask them medical related questions to assist with my support as a performer. Um, mm. And, you know, um, so that, that is a crucial symbiotic relationship of, of support mm -hmm. from each of these disciplines. Okay, so fantastic. Carrie and, and, and Rockers, you could imagine if you were or you have intentions of being athletes, you know, think about that support team that would surround you. Yeah. Sport medicine, sports science, that level of confidence and comfort in the mind of the athlete. Tell me not that you're not going to perform to your best. Imagine if you have your, your sponsorship, all of that to compete at the highest level. I mean, that would be awesome. Well, you that know what would they be say. Brilliant. You know what they say, teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah? Exactly, exactly. Well, I want to thank you both for joining me this morning. Marissa Gibson Daly, Sport and Science. Thank you. An exercise thank scientist, so certified exercise physiologist, and of course, Professor Adam Hawkey, expert in sport and science and exercise science. Thank you both very much for joining me this morning. Thank Enjoy the much. rest of your day.